everyone, and thanks for joining us for today's meetup. On the agenda today, Chris and Lindsay will be providing us an overview of the planning and economic development maps and apps that are available. And just a reminder, we'll be recording this meeting and posting it up on meetups.com shortly after the presentation. Um, and just for logistics, uh, anybody who wants to chat with one another amongst meetup members, go ahead and use the chat window. And if anybody wants to submit a question to the team, please use the Q&A window. So with that said, I'll go ahead and pass it over to Chris. All right. Thanks, Heather, very much. Um, so my name is Chris Pascalia, member of the local government team, and I'm joined with Lindsay Thomas. We're going to be talking about planning and development maps and apps today. Um, we have a lot to cover, so I'm going to go pretty quick through the intro, but we're going to jump right into demos, um, and hopefully towards the end, we'll have uh, a little bit of time for questions. So our mission thus far has been pretty simple. It's, it's really about delivering, empowering our customers to deliver and configure apps quickly, stay current, and create a library of useful geospatial information uh, that can be used, and also use the community. So use the meetups is, is one avenue for that to, to really drive what we do and, and uh, build stuff going forward. So that's really, that's really our mission. Um, our focus areas have really uh, been on the traditional planning needs of, of most folks, uh, in particular land use changes, violations, and things like that. But recently we've been working with the state government team on economic development. So Lindsay's going to show some of this towards the end of the presentation, but really about marketing your community and locating businesses within your community. So we have some new offerings there to, 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 to show. So to get started, um, we're first going to talk about uh, one of our one of our apps called uh, Land Use Public Comment, and really this is used for the general public. And what they can do is is basically go to the application, um, submit comments on proposed land use cases. Um, the comments can be submitted to a very simple interface, and then uh, you can review other comments that other folks um, have submitted as well. Um, the comments then can be reviewed by planning staff, and then a, uh, appropriate action or responses can be taken from there. Um, you can see other comments as well in the application, but um, the privacy of the, of the people that submitted those comments is hidden from, from other users. So we're just going to go ahead and jump right into that, right into that app um, and get, get right into the demo. So this is the Land Use Public Comment app. Um, as you can see, we're here, we're here in Naperville. Um, we have a lot of our, uh, actually all of our solution offerings are based on the same underlying um, base map information and, and, and content. So here we have some, some, uh, some polygons represented on the map. Um, the first one being the uh, downtown master plan. And in here, it gives you information about that. and actually gives you a link to the document that you can open and review. Um, in this case, it's, uh, it's a uh, plan commission agenda item, and in there um, are details about uh, land use uh, for the downtown area. And you can go through here, um, read it, of course, and then provide comments. So it's very simple to do. You, quickly simp you, you click a button um, for adding a comment, go in here, give your name, so my name here, Chris Pascalia, my email address, which again, this is um, this is given, but it won't be used to um, to show my comments. It'll only be used to submit information to the to the um, the planning jurisdiction. My address, my phone number, so I can give uh, Esri's phone number here. And then whatever comment I want to provide. So in this case, on page 41, it talks 48. It talks about the uh, the maximum height restrictions. Um, for the city downtown area, but there's some caveats to that. But it doesn't give really that information about what can be extended past that maximum height. So um, I need more info on that. So need more info on max height of buildings. But it could be anything um, for that for the particular um, uh, agenda item. So I'm going to go ahead and submit that 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 comment, and you actually see the comment that I made, not who actually submitted it, and the date in which it was submitted. So again, very simple application just to, just to provide comments based on, on cases or land use um, changes that are happening or even proposed land use changes um, within the community. So a very simple application. And you can probably see other uses for this as well, um, not just for land use, but for other, um, other things that are happening. 
All right, so let's jump back to the presentation just for a second. And the next app that I want to talk about is, is, is public notification. And this application can be used for planners, by planners, but also other departments within the, the organization, like the assessment department is an example that needs to generate um, a mailing list for adjoiners. Um, and, and really this allows you to select a parcel on the map or a property and then notify adjoining property owners within a certain distance about land use changes, zoning changes, assessment updates, and things like that. And one of the neat things about this application is it allows you to generate a simple mailing list in an Avery format or just a list in CSV. This is a simple plain text file that can be used by other systems or to even be used to generate um, a very specific mailing format that you want to send out. Um, this application, I should point out, too, requires uh, ArcGIS desktop server or an organizational account to, to host the content. And it's deployed on premises um, as a web application. So I'll go ahead and jump out and show that quickly. Um, this is it. And this has actually been redesigned recently. Uh, so this is the Land Use Public Notification app. And it's a very simplified user experience, meaning there isn't a lot of, um, uh, there's no table of contents. There's no um, it kind of extraneous things happening in the map. It's really just a map. And, and what you do is, is select a property. Um, or you can search for a property, and it can search by address, road, and school district as in this example. But you can also just select on the map once you've kind of navigated to the area uh, for the notification. Um, you get the parcel information. Uh, in this case, we're showing also the, the conveyance information, the owner name, um, which ta tax district that parcel belongs in or is in. And then what I can do at this point is notify just the adjoiners, or I can say I also want to add some other parcels to this um, to this one. So I can actually just use the control key and select um, even more parcel information around me. So in this case, I've, I've kind of taken the entire uh, section of the road. One more single click brings up the pop-up again, and then I can go ahead and notify um, the adjoin, adjoining owner. So what I want to do is actually specify a 50-foot buffer. I'm going to notify only the property owners, and um, I'm going to specify that I want to notify uh, or create a mailing list in Avery format. And I can choose from two formats to do that. And then go ahead and click Download. So this is going to buffer the those properties, select any adjoining ones, and then once I open up the document that was produced, it's a very uh, simple formatted um, Avery mailing label list. So that, that's one option. The other option, of course, is to, like I said before, is just to notify um, in the same way, but download a CSV. So you can download a CSV list of all those um, adjoining properties as well. Um, again, fairly simple. Uh, it uses a, um, uh, you know, just a, a geoprocessing uh, service underneath the covers to generate that buffer and then and then create the list. So pretty simple there. Um, we'll go ahead, go ahead and back to the uh, presentation. Uh, we also have a series of offerings that help you manage addresses. So we have a desktop, ArcGIS desktop ArcMap um, uh, set up for actually managing your address data. So this helps you create addresses along the, the road center line and then distribute the, the, the range numbers appropriately to those new addresses. Um, we also have a, a, a very simple application that lets you publish those addresses and then gather feedback about them. So if it's um, address information that's missing or if you want to provide more contact information for that address or updated contact information for that address, you can do that as well. And then uh, a new offering, fairly new offering, called Community Addresses, which allows you to aggregate address information across jurisdictions. So this could be multiple municipalities within a county contributing address information to a countywide database. Um, it could even be uh, even further up, it could be the county contributing address information to the statewide address layer. So we have some tools to help you do that um, and actually incrementally update that address layer. So if you have just some municipalities need to update, um, you can actually just update those and not have to republish the entire um, county or, or statewide address layer. 
So for to demonstrate this, I'm just going to show one of these one of these applications for now, and it's really the address crowdsourcing app. So after you've maintained your um, address data in in ArcMap, you publish it, and what you can then can do is publish the crowdsourcing address crowdsourcing application. So this shows you all of the current addresses, um, some proposed address information, and you can search and navigate the map just like any other app. Um, you can also just click on a, an address once you've once you've found the one that you want to um, provide more information on, and you can actually go in here, um, simply choose to update the contact information. So in this case. Um, Either the contact info was wrong, or I want to give the contact info for um, this particular address. Provide even more information, like a home phone number, work number, cell phone, and email, and then go ahead and save it. Um, so it's, in this case, I haven't provided all of the required information, so it's asking me for at least a, at least a, uh, a phone number. So what I'm going to do is provide my home phone. And again, this can be reviewed um, once the data is saved back. Um, and uh, and into the uh, the data database. Uh, you can also just go ahead and add new addresses, which is pretty neat. So if there's an address that's just missing on the map, what you can do is just click the new address tool, click on the map, it plops down a new address point, and you can actually give it the information that's missing. So if there's a full address, it, you know this address is completely missing from the data, I can put the full address in. The building and the unit, um, the unit number, if it's um, you know multiple units on that particular parcel, and then the municipality which that address resides in. So there's ways of just you know correcting or at least trying to contribute um, to, to missing addresses in this application as well. Uh, I'll just briefly touch on community addresses. So if I switch over, um, what I have here is just a hosted feature service of addresses. And what the tools, the, com the community address tools allow you to do is basically just update this service. And this address layer can be used by many applications in your organization. Um, I gave some examples, like the statewide address layer as an example, um, could be shared amongst everybody who's contributing. So what the tools do inside of ArcMap is allow you to do a simple field mapping over to a common information model, and then it just updates this service with those addresses. And if there's multiple jurisdictions contributing, um, they would give specific information about, um, in this case, your, your FIPS code for the, the contribution, and then, of course, only those would be updated on the next, on the next uh, update. So these are more desktop, desktop, uh, desktop tools to help you just aggregate address information across multiple jurisdictions. So there are some tools to help you there, too. Um, and then I'll just mention one more time, there's also a set of desktop editing tools and workflows built into our address data management tools to help you do um, address uh, management um, also in, in ArcGIS Desktop and, and ArcMap. All right, so now I'm going to switch. We're going to change gears a little bit. We're going to, we're going to switch over to, um, to Lindsay, and, and she's going to talk more about um, some of the new work that we're doing with uh, community engagement as well as uh, uh, economic development. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, you sound good, Lindsay. Okay, yeah, great. we can hear you, Lindsay. Awesome, thanks. Okay, so um, Chris, Chris talked a little bit about land use planning and uh, some addressing as well. And now we're going to talk a little bit about some of the uh, applications that we offer related to constituent engagement. So we have a, a fairly new application called Crowdsource Reporter. And this application is, is designed for the public, so, so residents, citizens, people living in your community. And it gives them the ability to report a problem or an observation back to the local government. It also allows the public to comment and vote on existing, existing problems and review um, comments and things submitted by their peers. So this is really beneficial because local governments are getting feedback from the public in a timely manner, so it, it's really kind of encouraging people to participate with their local government and participate in reporting those problems. The crowdsource reporter application 
um, could be configured in a variety of ways, whether you want that to, to be similar to a citizen service request application, maybe it's a complementary application to your 311 system, or it could just be the problem reporter. We've even seen it um, implemented to, to illustrate um, wildlife sightings um, in conservation areas. To deploy this application, all you need is an ArcGIS organizational account, and uh, the application itself is, de is deployed as part of a configurable group template. So you just need ArcGIS, ArcGIS Online to, to implement this. I'm going to jump out here and, and show you what it looks like. Now this, this application I'm showing you on a, on a desktop browser, but it was designed kind of with a, the, the, um, a smartphone first kind of design and can also work on, on a tablet device. So this reporter, um, you can log in as a guest, so as anonymously. You can sign in with an ArcGIS organizational account, or you have the option to sign in with Facebook, Facebook Twitter, or Google+. I haven't implemented it in this example, but you do have that option. So you're plugging into those social media, um, social media groups um, to, to get people engaged. So this is, a, 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 this is an application that's going to help report blight. So I'm going to zoom into these issues and, and see that there's been quite a, quite a bit of action in Naperville um, with people reporting uh, different issues. And so I can see a variety of issues here. And if I want to report an issue, I can just click on Report It. And I can enter in the details. So I want to report that there's some some tall grass and overgrown lawn. And of course, I can submit a phone number. And I'm going to leave out my email address. Today's date is here. Um, and then I'm also going to put my name in here as well. The type of problem is going to be tall grass or weeds. And so I have a couple options. I can either click on the map to, to locate my issue, so I could zoom in and click on the map, or I can actually go in here and search, search, search for a specific address. So I'm just going to zoom in on the map and click, uh, click the location that I saw. It was right here, um, close to that park entrance. And so when I click on report, it's going to submit it back, back to the local government. I can see a thank you here. And if I pop back out, I can see where that was reported on the map right here. And while I'm in here, I can check out other, other reports of, of problems that have been reported by the public. So I can see there's some illegal signs. And if I'm concerned about that, I can upvote that as well. So the concept of upvoting um, issues that, that you're concerned about is, is possible. And then finally, if I want to add an additional comment, I can um, I can come in here and I can actually type a comment and amend a comment onto a currently existing issue. And so, that, so that's the crowdsource reporting app, and this is highly configurable. What's great about this is as you configure the ArcGIS online map, you're really configuring the application itself. So as you configure different parts of um, your web map pop-up, that's really driving how the, the app application is going to look and, and react. So there's a lot of kind of flexibility there. And so that's the crowdsource reporter. And we've got a great complementary app. So now you have all these reports from the public. What am I going to do with them? We've got an app for that. We have um, this application. This application is for internal staff members, so uh, your customer service representative, clerks, public work staff, um, and it allows you to review and triage problems or observations from, um, from, the, from the public. So as those issues come in, this application is going to help you manage that. So it provides that better communication between local governments and the public actually reporting the issue. This too is also an ArcGIS organ requires an organizational account to deploy, and it's the and it's really deploying a configurable group template. Now, both the crowdsource reporter and the crowdsource manager are currently available to, today on the ArcGIS platform. 
Um, they're part of what we call um, our early adopter group. However, if you go to our solution site to get this up and running, we talk you through kind of using that early adopter process. But these will be fully available in the full released version this July uh, 2015. So this summer, you'll you'll see these kind of fully integrated within within ArcGIS. And so I'm going to flip out here and and show you. And so because this is a internal app. I'm going to authenticate with my with my <laughs> with the wrong password apparently. Um, I'm going to authenticate and open up that application. And so this is the Blight problem manager. So this is all the occurrences of Blight that that have been reported. And when I come in here, I can I can sort sort by problem types. So I can see there's a lot of graffiti and tall grass, an illegal sign of an abandoned building. You can see the details kind of related to those things as people have reported them. You can also see the number of votes. So if I wanted to to look at which ones people have been talking about, this person's lawn needs to be mowed. That's that's something that people are really concerned about. So as I scroll across here, I come to public view. So Maybe, for example, if someone has spam, spammed, you know, added a service request or a, a blight problem that, that's not accurate, you can go in here and you can actually um, say that that's not going to be visible to the public. So I did that with a yes one. If I say no, then you're going to see that the map updates and that problem disappears. And as I scroll across, you can see all the information that the user has, that the, the public has put in there. I can call them if I want to follow up on the issue. And then finally, um, there is uh, there is the, uh, the status, right? So is the, the work, is the problem in progress? Has it been completed? It's been received? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sort by received. So these are all new problems that have been submitted. And I've reviewed those. And I'm actually going to say they're now in progress because I've sent a, sent a work order out to a crew that's going to take a look at this. And so this is the, the crowdsource manager. And again, you just need ArcGIS Online and it's a configurable group template. And so to complement that, um, now that we've said that this problem is in progress, we need someone to actually go go look at it, and that's where our code violation um, map or solution comes in comes into play. So this code violation is for code code enforcement officers, uh, building officials, building administra administrators, and this allows that allows those officers to go and collect and inspect land use and code violation in the field. And this is what's great about this is it's accessible. It's accessible with a map, and all the related information is available at your fingertips on your smartphone or tablet when you log in to Collector for ArcGIS. So again, this is you just need an ArcGIS for or, ArcGIS organizational account and Collector for ArcGIS. So if you have a smartphone or tablet device, you're able to download Collector for ArcGIS on Google Play or the App Store. And just sign in with your ArcGIS named user account and, and access that map. And so this is what the land use um, viola violations map looks like. If I go ahead and click on this issue, you have all the information about the, the code violation, um, that there was an RV parked behind the house for, for longer than seven days. But you can see that this issue has actually been closed. And you can see that there was a there was an inspection done, and it said that the RV actually was removed. If I click on this other code violation, I can come in here and I can look at the show the related records, and you can see we have um, no, there is no related records. Sorry, I wanted to show an example of, of two different inspections. So if you can imagine that there's 
a first notice, a second notice, so all that kind of related inspection information is going to be available to that code enforcement officer who's out in the field right at their fingertips. And if they do have connectivity on their smartphone or code violation, as they come in to here and, and, uh, and they want to update the status, so for example, this violation is enclosed, but really you actually need to reopen it, you can reopen that code violation. And it's going to update that map automatically and get updated across, across, you, across the system. So the Park and Recreation Finder is, is an app that we've, that, that's been very popular uh, with, with the local government community. And we consider this an economic development app as well. It's for the public, so it's for constituents. It's for constituents, uh, residents, visitors to the community. And it's really just helping to locate uh, those park and recreation opportunities within your community, whether you're on a phone, a tablet, or, or at your computer. And what's really happening is you're, you're marketing those recreation opportunities, which is a key quality of life indicator. For this application, you need an ArcGIS organizational account or ArcGIS for server, and it's deployed uh, locally. It's locally on your own web server as an on-premises uh, application. So the Park and Recreation Finder is one of my favorite applications. Uh, for example, if I wanted to take my niece to a, pro, uh, to a park, I can come in to this application. I can search for my own address. And it's going to show me all the parks um, that are uh, close to me. So it's going to show me my nearest park is actually River Walk Park. And I can see that there's, there is a playground available here as well as restrooms, which, are, which is always important when, when you're taking a four-year-old to the park. So this application uh, really highlights those, those park and rec opportunities within your community. If I'm not familiar with the area, I can always get the directions to the park right over here, and if I want to, I can go ahead and, and print those off as well. If I'd like to comment on the condition of the park, I can come in here and, and, and comment and say some people are saying it's a great park. So I can just come in and say, um, lovely, lovely park, and I can give it a five-star rating. And so that's the park and recreation application. So LiveWorkLocate is, is another economic development application. And this is for potential res residents and businesses. It allows a chamber of commerce or a planning department to, to market the community um, by highlighting those key quality of life indicators and business characteristics. The app can be deployed uh, as a Chamber of Commerce app or an economic development app. And this application requires you to have an RTS organizational account, and it is deployed locally on your, your own web server. And so this is Live, Work, Work and Locate. And it's very configurable, and it can, you know, you can deploy it as illustrating um, the different kind of app persona. So um, live is, is talking about getting people to locate your community. Work is getting people to come work out of your community and locate. You're trying to get businesses to locate to your community. So you're looking for people that want to work out of, uh, for the, in this case, Naperville, people that want to businesses that want to locate to Naperville, and people that want to live in Naperville. And so you can deploy the app with all three of those different personas, or you could do um, two of those personas or just one. So if you just want to market your community in one way, you can do that. And the app's very flexible that way. And so this, this application is, is configured for Naperville. And you can see that in the live persona, it's highlighting all that kind of key quality of life indicators. And I'm going to search for an address. And when I do that, that's actually going to show me all the available amenities within a 10-minute drive. And because Naperville is a smaller city, um, you can see that you can pretty much hit, hit most of the amenities within this area. But as it does this, this kind of um, this search, it shows you all the different 
what's nearby. Um, and you can see post offices, libraries, museums. And for example, if I want to see how far Naperville settlement is, I can click on click on these different items and, and see how far that actually is um, from, from my search area. Optionally, too, this is a drive time, but if you did want to pr perform this based on a walk time, you have that ability as well. So if you're if you're a state or a county, um, you may I, I'd like to show. So there's two examples. This is the, the local government configuration of this app, but we also have the state implementation of this application. And I'm going to flip to the state application just to highlight the the work persona because it's so um, it's a really good example. So we're going to jump to the East Coast here. And we're going to go into the DC area. I'm going to search for. Uh, College Park, just outside of, of, of DC. And so I did a 10-minute drive analysis within this area. And what it's highlighting, what's nearby, is very different than the live persona. It's showing incubators, so places that are available to work. Um, it's showing the unemployment rate of the counties. It's showing research perks, the potential labor force in this area. Also, mass transit, so if you're, you're going to work in this area and live somewhere else, it, it's showing your, your options there, as well as median household income to give you an idea of, of what the, what's in the community. And then finally, um, so that's great if you're trying to get people to work in your community. If you're a business and you want people to, to locate, We can go into the alert, the, the the locate profile, and again, I'm I'm going to try to do a walk time this time. I'm going to say a 35 minute walk within College Park. Let's do that. Let's make that a little bit bigger. And so you can see within this area, you can look at. Um, the obtainment of bachelor degrees within the within um, Prince George County, the business personal tax rate for the for the counties, the employment rate, the personal ta tax rate, labor force, mass transit. So some of the some of the indicators here are similar to the work persona, but um, things that you want to highlight to attract businesses. So for example, if you have uh, tax incentives, this is a great place to, to put those key indicators in here if you're trying to attract new business to your community. So now that you've decided that you want to locate to the area, we've got another app that will help, help with that. Um, and this application is called the Site Selector, and I'm just going to jump out to that point and talk about that. So the Site Selector, also an economic development app, this is strictly for um, business owners and corporations. So now that you're, you've decided you're going to move into Naperville or the DC area, um, where, what, where am I going to put my business? So it helps you locate buildings or sites, vacant, vacant sites, um, which is cool. But what's really powerful about this application is it allows you to combine the community and business demographics. So this is, um, and that information is powered by Esri's Geo Enrichment Services, so the premium con content from Arceus Online. It's taking advantage of, of census data and, and business data and demographics to help enrich this application. And I'll show that in a second, but it's, it's, this is one of my favorite applications as well. So really, it, it, it's helping businesses make better decisions about locating your community and making sure that it's, a, it's the right fit for them. And with this application, you need an ArcGIS organizational account. You also need ArcGIS for server because we are using a geoprocessing service as well, and it's deployed locally on your, on your web server. We start that up. So this is so this is a site selector app, and we're back in Naperville, and I'm going to search for. Um, you have the option to search for a building or a site. I'm going to search for a building, 
and I'm going to say within four miles of, of this address. And so within Naperville, that's going to give me all the optional uh, buildings that I can, can lease or, or buy within this area. And as I go through this list, um, I don't really want to wade through this. So I'm actually going to go in here and filter out some options. I'm a retail vendor, so I'm going to say I just want a retail space. And I'm going to go ahead, and I think I like this retail center location a little bit better, so I'm going to click on it. And when I do, I can see the property information that's tied to it. So you can see um, there's no incentives. Um, I would have to buy the building. The square footage, um, the available amenities. So yeah, is there gas, electric, water, telco? Is there high speed uh, distance to transit, so major transit, as well as who to contact about uh, buying this property? And down below here, you can also see the, the neighborhood information. So um, who's in the neighborhood and, and what what's their kind of background is available as well. So this is great, but I'd rather see this in a report. So I can go here and I can say property information. And if I click download, it's actually going to generate a report. And I've already done that. So it generates this report. So it's property information. You get a map with, with uh, the location that you looked at, as well as all the uh, enriched data, so property information and neighborhood information about the property, as well as this nice picture here. And so you have the ability to do that with sites as well. So if I search um, the same address, I can get, um, you can see there's a couple different insights that are available to me. And there's a couple different reports that we've configured for, for buildings, or for vacant sites as opposed to buildings. So you can see site information, or you can get a, a traffic count profile. And these are all configurable within the application, so maybe you want one or, and not the other, you, you can easily do that. And then the third thing that you're going to want to look like look at is if you're going to locate to this area, what about the other businesses in the area? So who are maybe it's who my competitors are, but then also maybe you're looking at who are my customers and who are my potential employees. So you can get a summary of the businesses that are available here. And then you can also switch over and get demographic information as well. And so if I go ahead, I can create a business summary, or I can do a demographic and income profile of the area. I've gone ahead and I've generated those in advance. So this is a demographic and income profile uh, in, in the area of Naperville. So you can see all this great, great information about household income, population by age, um, ethnicity, homeowners versus renters. It's all there. And then also we have the business summary, which is going to talk about businesses in the area, what type of businesses they are, and that kind of breakdown. And so that's the site selector application. And so really the value of this is um, the real estate information is there, but also these kind of reports with demographic and kind of community data that you can download and, and print out and add that to your PowerPoint when maybe you're presenting it to your boss. And also, um, this is good for businesses too because it's, make, it's, it's helping them feel better about their decision to locate to an area to make sure that the investments they're, they're making in the community are going to last. But then also, it's, a, it's an aligning with their corporate vision. So, so Chris and I have... Um, completed an overview of our planning and economic development solutions that we offer in ArcGIS. Um, where, do I, where do I get them? <laughs> so uh, the best place to get them is, is come to solutions.arcgis.com. And if you click on local government, you'll come to this page. And if you scroll down, you'll actually go to a section that says, I missed it. So the planning and development, I've got to find it. There it is. <laughs> Click on planning and development, and it's going to show you all these, these applications that we talked about here today. And so going forward, um, you know, we continue to, we want to continue to provide configurations of the ArcGIS platform to support planning and economic development. And when necessary, we'll, we'll kind of enhance those offerings. So 
in saying that, I want to give you a sneak peek of, of some of the solutions that we're currently working on. And uh, I'll just jump out to the PowerPoint and we can, we can show you that. So we're working on a new version of the Park and Recreation Finder. As I said, it's, it's been quite popular. And we wanted to kind of update it with a new look and feel. Um, so it has a new design. We've given it a little bit of a facelift. It'll have better support for ArcGIS Online Maps, so you can, you can use a web map in this application as opposed to just having to use services in the old application. Um, and also, it allows you to create calendar items, so an ICS file with event time and date information. So you can add things to a calendar, and then you can actually just download that onto your phone or your desktop or your tablet uh, calendar. And this is going to be an organization, it's going to require an organizational account and it's going to be deployed locally on your, your web server. Next up is the, is the trip planner. So um, this is very similar to the park, the park and Recreation Finder in terms of the event information. But you can imagine that this would be a tourism application or a view my community, come see my community, or a trip planner. And so the value of this is you can kind of show different events or different things that are happening around your, your municipal area and um, that the person looking at it or person who's visiting can click on those things and add it to their calendar and, and kind of use it as a way to plan their to plan their trip. And this will be an this will require an ArcGIS organizational account and um, is an on-premises web application that you host on your own local server. And then finally, um, the polling application or the crowdsource polling application. Um, this is uh, something that we're working on in the future. And it's designed to capture public sentiment. So if you remember the, um, the land use public comment application that Chris showed earlier, this, is, this would be, um, you could configure that kind of workflow to work with this application. Um, this is going to be a hosted configurable application template in ArcGIS Online. Um, it could be used to kind of vote on proposals, get feedback on development, just a way to, to garner how, how citizens and, and residents of the community are feeling about a particular project. So this is a, something that I think is, is really powerful. Uh, this is going to be available in July as part of the early, the early adopter group. And um, later on, we'll, we'll fully release that application. That will be part of ArcGIS Online. And then I'm going to let Chris jump in and, and talk a little bit about photo survey. Yeah, sure. We're also working on a new set of application configurations for capturing street level photos and then um, an application complementary to that that um, helps you conduct rap rapid damage assessments, inventory blighted properties, target reappraisal offers for, for land appraisal, um, and identify structures that could pose safety concerns. So this will be a set of tools to actually help you process street level photos taken from a vehicle driving around your, your city, um, and then process those photos into a series of uh, points on the map, essentially, that, that have those property photographs. And then an application that help, that lets you go in and actually survey um, and answer questions particular um, to that photograph. Um, for instance, the, the condition of the property, is there, is there overgrowth, um, you know, are, are there windows boarded up, is there, you know, just general general characteristics that might um, might be general blight or you know issues that, that could cause um, safety concern and then submit that feedback um, through the application and then on the other end will be a series of dashboards to help you kind of review the progress and we've seen this we've seen this work in Gary Indiana um, some work in Detroit where they're sending people in the field to actually gather photographs and, and do surveys manually in the field um, and then bring that data back um, to the office. But we're thinking about a more automated way to do that and an application to supplement that workflow. So it's pretty exciting work. Uh, we're kind of in the beginning stages there of, of that work. Great. Um, I think we have, we have some time for some questions if you want to do that. Sure. We have one question from Stacy. 
About the land use public notification, she asked if there's going to be an enhancement to select property by geometry someday. Uh, so like drawing a polygon on the map to select the properties? Uh, um, sure. Not, not yep. currently, but it's definitely something, you know, that, that's the kind of feedback we'd like to see, um, you know, and, and like to hear. So if there's um, enhancements like that for, for any of the applications, we'd love to hear about them and then, and then think about incorporating those into our backlog for sure. So I guess the idea there would be to draw the polygon that you want to notify um, or use to select the underlying um, uh, properties by. One of the new enhancements we did do to the application is allow you to add other layers. <clears throat> so I didn't talk about it too much in the, in the demonstration, but I, we actually added the school district polygons into that Try It Now configuration that you can see right now on the solution site. And it lets you type in a school district, um, and it'll select all of the properties based on that school district. So if you do have other layers like that, um, you can incorporate those into the app and use those to select the underlying um, parcel properties. Yeah, she said uh, select a larger boundary area for an event or paving. Yeah, and Scott, Scott mentioned in, in the chat window as well that, you know, you can add those polygons um, to the application. So you could draw them in and then add them to the app, uh, kind of like what I talked about for the school districts as well. Um, that's all the questions in the Q&A window right now. Um, there was a good question about the, the time frame for some of the new apps that Lindsay mentioned, and Scott replied um, that the Park and Finder new app will be out by the UC release, and then the Trip Planner will be coming in this summer and early fall. That might be good to note for everybody. Um, yeah, and then, then also by UC release, that, that's the June time frame, so June 2015. Uh, there was a question on a reference guide to summarize which maps or which apps require ArcGIS server and which only require ArcGIS online. Hey, Lindsay, yeah, so, uh, maybe, okay. oh, no, maybe you could just show like uh, in the solution site how, you know, once they select an app where all the rec system requirements are that you guys summarize today. Sure. I'll try to answer both questions uh, at the same time. So for, for Park, and, Park and Recreation Finder, the, the currently released version, um, if you come into the documentation, you'll get an overview of what the application does. We often give a video, but we have um, requirements what you get, what's new, download, try it live. So those are kind of all the key points that you can look at. You click on requirements. We'll talk about the experience that you need. But then also in terms of software, um, for a Parker Mac Rec Finder, you need desktop. You need an online subscription or ArcGIS server. And then you need the ability to, to host that, so um, a web server to, to host that application. And so as you scroll down here, you can see what you get, and that, that kind of talks about if it's an application that's going to be hosted on your web server, the code's going to come with that. We're going to provide the map documents that um, support the application as well as the local government information model, which contains sample data from Naperville. So you can get it up and running with Naperville, see kind of how it works um, as soon as you download. And then what's new is, is just tracking um, bug fixes or changes that we've made over the different releases of this application. And finally, the getting started will kind of take you into that traditional documentation, publish these services, how do I configure the application, and then finally, how do I publish the application? So it'll take you through that workflow. 
And so, Heather, I think the other question that you were, sorry, I should finish this. Scott, is there any, is anything else you wanted to add on that? No, that's good. Thanks, Lindsay. Okay. Yeah, so, um, for example, site selector. So, site selector, um, you could have an organizational account, but you still require a server. And so, the server requirement doesn't really have anything to do with um, the services with the exception of the geo, I should say, it just has the exception of the geoprocessing service. So in order to publish a geoprocessing service, you're going to need ArcGIS for server. But also um, accompanying that, you're going to need an online subscription if you want to take advantage of those good kind of geo-enriched services. So this is a case where you're going to need online as well as server, server to publish the application. Are there any more questions out there? It's pretty quiet. I think we pretty much covered any, everything. Is there anything else, Chris or Lindsay, you'd like to add before wrap up? No, I, I think I think uh, I think that's great. Thanks cool. for coming out, everyone. Yeah. So thanks for joining us for today's meetup, and we look forward to seeing and hearing from you at our next meetup, which is on May 21st, where we'll be providing an overview of the RTS Online crowdsourcing apps, which you've seen a bit today. Um, until then, have a great afternoon, everybody. Thanks a lot. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.